If you've been on the internet for a while, you may remember this disturbing Slither.io video from July 2016. In the video, a user logs onto Slither.io and discovers a hidden bonus level to the game, released that same year. The creator documented the steps required to get there, getting past 8,000 points then heading directly towards the wall, where the secret path lies hidden. There, after some electricity, He's then greeted by a giant snake of Lovecraftian proportions, which kills him practically instantly. The video was obviously faked, especially since the channel behind it was a horror stories channel, and the editing isn't trying to be anything too realistic. But I remember people actually believed this was real for a brief period of time. I remember back in 2016 and 2017, videos like these were everywhere. Maybe not the scary part, but the obviously faked, edited, or clickbait Slither gameplay would often get tens of millions of views. And that got me thinking about the other games that follow the .io moniker. It's been a while since I had last played any of these games, which is weird, as .io games played a big part of my online experience, especially during school. So I'm interested in seeing how they've changed and evolved since 2017. But first, what exactly is a .io game? .io is a website domain that was designed to be used for the British Indian Ocean Territory. However, uses of the domain often have nothing to do with that. IO can also stand for Input Output, which makes the domain preferable for people making games or wanting to build an association with technology, as coding requires both inputs and outputs. .io games typically follow a similar format, an online, free-for-all, score-based game, where the higher the score, the more of an advantage you get. In some games, this can be more obvious than others, as being the little guy against someone at the top of the scoreboard isn't something that usually works out either way. But that's just a broad overview of the topic. Let's take a closer look at some of these games, starting with the originator of this trend, Agar.io. If you remember, Agar.io, sometimes referred to as Agario, is a game that was released in 2015, with the goal of you becoming big. You start as this tiny little speck, but as you consume dots, you gain mass, and can eat the dots smaller than you, your fellow players. Once you start making some progress, you can also gain the ability to shoot off and split into two, allowing for somewhat of a lunge to catch much smaller circles. Since, as you get bigger, you also get slower. As simple as it is, the replayability and ease of access allowed for the game to completely explode online, specifically on YouTube, as watching this game being played well is kinda satisfying. But all this success led to an even bigger game one year later. Slither.io is the first game you think of when .io games are brought up. Thousands of videos, millions of views, tons of publicity. And as for the game itself, it's quite a bit more balanced. While Agario gives the bigger circle an automatic win over a smaller one, in Slither it's technically possible for the smallest snake on the map to beat the biggest, albeit with an innate disadvantage. Like the last game, you need to eat little dots to increase in size, and eventually, make it to the top of the leaderboard. To do this, you need to eat the orbs that come from bigger and longer snakes. You can take them out by getting them to ram headfirst into your body. Bigger snakes are able to circle smaller ones, slowly tightening until the smaller snake has no other choice but to accidentally bump into you. While it sounds a bit complicated in concept, it actually feels completely natural to play. I guess that's what happens when it's taken from one of the biggest classics. Once again, it's another simple game everyone's played, but it's still more than worth talking about since it's by far the most popular game here. But to be honest, I remember watching videos about it more than I actually remember playing it at school. I even made a handful of videos myself years later. Why did I think these were a good idea? Deep.io is a more advanced take on the classic formula. In this game, you play as a little shooty cannon guy, and you have to delete shapes and other players to level up. And every level you get a point, to allow you to buff your damage, speed, reloading, and more and every 15 levels, you get to completely upgrade yourself. This can completely change the way you play the game, like these homing shots that follow the mouse. Another thing I like here is that once you finally die, you can still come back with some pre-existing levels instead of having to go back to square one. 
Another thing that really makes this game stand out is the use of different game modes. While the original free-for-all game mode is here, there's also different team modes, which allow for a slightly different experience, although very similar. Expanding on these ideas, Surviv.io is yet another shooter. Being a 2D reimagining of PUBG, it follows the ever-popular 2017 formula of the Battle Royale. But unlike PUBG or even other games like Knives Out or H1Z1, the gameplay of Surviv runs at a much faster pace. Matches only last about 5 or so minutes, allowing for the perfect battle royale game for people who don't like getting good grades. The top-down perspective stops people from hiding on the storm line, which is already the most boring part of any battle royale game, so I'm fine to let it go. The perspective also makes it harder to run away from fights, so they usually end up in someone actually winning, rather than just someone running away. These factors undeniably make Surviv a solid game. Not to mention, other game modes are here too. But where do we go from here? How do we expand from a 2D, decently open world battle royale? What about a 3D shooter? Krunker.io isn't the kind of game you usually think of when mentioning the term .io game. While there's technically a scoreboard, there's little else in common with the rest of these games. This one's a 3D FPS with multiple game modes and an active player base. There's not an extreme punishment for dying, and you don't get an advantage for staying alive. Because mechanically, this isn't a .io game. It's a regular FPS with a .io web domain. When you hop into a lobby, the first thing you'll notice is just how sweaty some of these players are. Despite this being a free online browser game, some people still put down hundreds of hours on it. A testament to the game's ability to keep people engaged. Something I really like here is that you get the choice to throw your knife at people. You can only throw it once and it leaves you with your fists for melee combat. But the payoff is an instant kill single use projectile. A really unique take on what's usually a pretty standard mechanic. There's even a modding community with custom servers, where I was able to play this extremely cool Counter-Strike Dust 2 map. That, paired with a slew of game modes, is something that gives this game way more content and replayability than the more simplistic games. And it even carries the hallmark of .io games, the fact you can play it on a lower level machine in the middle of class. This game gives off the same vibes as something like Roblox Arsenal. Guns kill fast and you respawn fast, leading to high speed intense gameplay. If you can get past the learning curve fighting other players, that is. Nowadays, it seems the most popular use of the .io branding comes down to the titles of mobile games, using a similar gameplay formula, but omitting the use of real online multiplayer, opting for bots instead, taking advantage of the pre-established notion that these games would be online and faking it to save on bandwidth, since servers are either too expensive or too annoying for people playing on cell data. It seems faking .io games isn't entirely a thing of the past. I'm impressed at just how far this little trend ended up becoming. While Slither.io isn't the big thing anymore, it's expanded into something far, far greater. A legacy that usually isn't saved for little browser games.